Welcome to our academy. Myself is Shreya Singh. I'm an educator at our academy. You can follow me on the learning app where you can see my courses. Also courses by awesome educators. So getting on with our course, Introduction to Power Plant Engineering Part 1. Let's have a lesson about Combined Cycle Plants. So looks like an interesting topic, right? So please do get on with this lesson. And please don't forget to rate, review and share this lesson. And please do subscribe on our YouTube channel that is the Anacademy Engineering Curriculum. Thank you. Hello guys, welcome to Anacademy. Myself is Shreya Singh. I'm an educator at Anacademy. You can follow me on the learning app where you can see my courses. Also courses by awesome educators. So getting on with our course, Introduction to Power Plant Engineering Part 1. Let's have a lesson about Combined Cycle Plants. So looks like an interesting topic, right? So please do get on with this lesson. And please don't forget to rate, review and share this lesson. And please do subscribe on our YouTube channel that is the Anacademy Engineering Curriculum. Thank you. So guys, let's get on with our lesson, uh, Power Plant Engineering course, sorry for that. Uh, given my introduction already, my name is Shreyase, I am a B Mechanical Engineering student. You can follow me on the Anacademy user platform which I am mentioning over here. So let's get on with our course, Introduction to Power Plant Engineering Part 1. So what are, who are the target audience for this course, namely engineering students, general audience who are interested in thermal engineering topics, people who are interested in mechanical entities, People who are interested in energy resources and environmental enthusiasts. So let's get on with the learning outcomes of this slide or presentation. You guys will come to know what are combined cycle plants. What is a gas turbine or steam turbine power plant? What are the thermodynamics of Rankine Rankine combined cycle? How, so how do the plants operating in series give us the efficiencies? As well as the plants operating in parallel giving us efficiencies. And also the plants having supplementary heat supply and firing. So let's get on with our lesson. Combined cycle plants. Let's have a quotation. Your positive action combined with positive thinking results in success. A self defamatory quote. Let's move on. So let's get on. What are combined cycle plants? Combined cycle plants. So to obtain the maximum steam temperature in a power cycler. Uh, the maximum steam temperature in a power cycle it actually does not exceed 600 degrees centigrade. Although the temperature in a dry bottom pulverized coal, for, uh, coal uh, furnace is about 1300 degrees centigrade. Therefore, there is a great thermal irreversibility and a decrease of availability because of heat transfer from the combustion gases to steam through such a large temperature difference. By superposing a high temperature power plant as a topping unit to the steam plant and a high energy conversion efficiency from fuel to electricity can be achieved. Since the combined plant operates through a higher temperature range, combined plants may be of the following types namely gas turbine, steam turbine, power plant, the MHD uh, steam plant, the thermionic steam plant and the thermoelectric steam plant. These three plants I will be discussing in the later parts of this course or maybe I will be creating a new course for discussing these plants. So let's move on with the gas turbine, steam turbine, power plant. So moving on, gas turbine, steam turbine, power plant. The A standard cycle for a gas turbine power plant is the Brayton cycle which like the Rankine cycle also consists of two reversible adiabatics and two reversible isobars. But unlike the Rankine cycle, the working fluid does not undergo phase change. A gas turbine plant can either be open or closed. Since the product of combustion is the working fluid which produces power by doing work on the blades of the gas turbine, it is an internal combustion plant. However, unlike the reciprocating internal combustion engine, the gas turbine is a steady flow device and the blades are always subjected to the highest gas temperature. To limit the maximum gas temperature to about 1200 Kelvin at inlet to the turbine consistent with the material used, a higher fuel ratio is used. So this is actually the flow diagram of an open cycle gas turbine. So the C here means the compressor, the CC here means the combustor chamber and this is the GT that is the gas turbine. So you can see the exhaust gases expel out of here and the air is passed through here and this is a cyclic process. So this is the sign we can use over here and the fuel is parted to the plant from this region. You can see the TS diagram of this vapor power cycle. So this is actually the compressor work, this is the turbine work and this is the heat added to the device. So let's move on to the disadvantages of gas turbine, steam turbine power plant. 
It has a large compressor work input since the power required to drive the compressor is considerably higher than the re than that required by a pump for the same pressure rise. The compressor thus consumes a large part of the work produced by the turbine. Large exhaust loss since the exhaust gas temperature is quite high and also the mass flow rate of gas is large due to the high air fuel ratio used. Machine inefficiencies since with the decrease in compressor efficiency the work input to the compressor increases and with the decrease in turbine efficiency the work output from the turbine decreases at certain values of compressor efficiency and turbine efficiency a situation may arise when the compressor consumes more power than what the turbine develops so the machine efficiencies of the compressor and the turbine have to be high enough to yield justifiable network output low cycle efficiency this is due to the large exhaust loss and large compressor work and machine inefficiencies costly fuel since the cost of kerosene and other fuels used is much higher than that of coal its availability is not always guaranteed due to these above factors the cost of power generator by a stationary gas turbine pl plant for a utility system is also very high let's move on to the advantages of these turbines they are less installation cost less installation time quick starting and stopping and fast response to load changes so a gas turbine plant is often used as a peaking unit for certain hours of the day when the energy demand is high a large steam plant is designed to meet peak loads would operate at an uneconomical load factor during most of the year to overcome its low cycle efficiency a gas turbine may be used in conjunction with a steam turbine plant in a utility based load station to offer the utilities the gas turbine advantages of quick starting and stopping and permit flexible operation of the combined plant over a wide range of loads so let's move on to this was what i was telling used as a peaking unit operated at an uneconomical load used in conjunction permits flexible operation over a wide range of loads so let's move on to the thermodynamics of brayton rankine combined cycle plants Let us consider two cyclic plants which are uh, coupled in series the toppling plant operating at the brayton cycle and the bottoming one operating at the rankine cycle helium gas may be the working fluid in the topping plant and the water in the bottoming plant so you can see the combined the overall efficiency of the combined plant is eta equals eta 1 plus eta 2 minus eta 1 eta 2 which i have already shown let's move on to the flow diagram of a brayton rank kind combined cycle plant so this is what a brayton gas turbine cycle you can see here and this is the rank kind steam cycle so this is a brayton rank kind combined cycle plant and this is the ts diagram of a brayton rank kind combined cycle plant and this is how the series flow which i had mentioned this will be how the series flow will be there let's move on to the heat loss between two plants in series i already mentioned the two uh, notes over here let's move on to it with the help of a derivation so this is the derivation i was talking about so this is the diagram of the heat loss between two plants in series uh, actually it was assumed that the all heat rejected by the topping plant is absorbed by the bottoming one however there is always some heat loss and the heat absorbed is always less than the heat rejected let ql ql be the uh, heat loss between the two plants and the overall plant efficiency is w1 plus w2 by q1 where eta1 is w1 by q1 and eta2 is w2 by q2 q3 will be given as q2 minus ql and then therefore the eta becomes eta1 plus eta2 minus eta1 eta2 minus into xl you guys can see how it was derived by these equations where xl is the fraction of heat supplied which is lost that is ql by q1 the overall efficiency can also be expressed in a different way the ratio of q3 by q2 is the efficiency of the boiler in the bottoming plant so that eta b is q3 by q2 which is 1 minus ql by q2 now eta becomes w1 plus w2 by q1 that is eta1 plus eta2 q3 by q1 which will be simplified as eta1 plus eta2 eta b into 1 minus eta1 that is eta1 plus eta2 eta b minus eta1 eta2 eta b that will be as eta1 plus eta0 into 2 minus h1 into e0 eta0 of the second where eta0 into 2 this thing is actually represented as eta b into eta2 which is actually the overall efficiency of the bottoming plant 
Let's move on to two cyclic plants operating in parallel. These are the nodes. I'll be explaining that in the derivation. You can see this is actually the flow diagram of two cyclic plants operating parallel. So if we consider two cyclic plants which are operating in parallel, one on Brayton cycle and one on Rankine cycle, the total heat supply Q1 is divided between two plants Q2 and Q4 so that X1 is equal to Q2 by Q1 that is Q2 by Q2 plus Q2 or Q4 which is the fraction of the total heat which is taken by the plant operating on Brayton cycle. The network done by the two plants are W1 is eta1 into Q2 plus W2 equals eta2 into Q4. The overall efficiency of the combined plant is eta equals W1 plus W2 divided by Q1 which will give us this equation while solving these things you can see here the equation is eta2 plus x1 into eta1 minus eta2 where x2 is q4 divided by q2 plus q4 and 1 minus x2 is q2 by q2 plus q4 so while solving you get the eta as eta1 minus x2 into n1 minus n2 if n1 is greater than n2 then or uh, then n lies between n1 and n2 thus there is no advantage to the parallel system if the cyclic plant one operating on Brayton cycle could absorb more heat then there would, it would be advantageous to the to use the plant alone so plants having supplementary firing so this is the notes I'll be explaining you guys all things in the derivation above so this is actually the flow diagram of the Brad, uh, Brayton Rankine cycles with supplementary heating. So this is the PV diagram of Brayton Rankine cycles with supplementary heating. Let's move on to the derivation. Here X2 is given by Q4 by Q1 which actually forms this uh, derivation and W1 is eta1 into Q2. Q3 equals 1 minus eta1 into Q2 and W2 is eta2 into Q3. The overall plant efficiency that is eta is given by W1 plus W2 into Q1 which actually forms us to give this last equation that is eta1 you can see all these things steps this is the last equation that is eta1 plus eta2 minus eta1 eta2 minus x2 into eta1 into 1 minus eta2 therefore the overall efficiency of a series parallel plant is less than that of two coupled cycles in series since the last term is positive in the absence of supplementary heating that is when x2 is equal to 0 the overall efficiency reduces to that of an ideal series plant so plants having supplementary heat supply you can see this is a bigger derivation so you can see here let x2 and xl this is x2 and xl be the fractions of heat supply q1 which represent the supplementary heat supply q4 and heat loss to the surroundings ql so x2 xl is derived eta1 W1, W2 is given. So the overall efficiency is given by W1 plus W2 divided by Q1 which actually forms this last equation that is eta1 into 1 minus x2 plus n2 into x2 plus 1 minus eta1 into 1 minus x2 minus xl. If x2 is 0, this is this, then eta becomes n eta1 plus eta2 minus eta1 eta2 minus xl or into n2 so this is how you get the uh, 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 plant in series having supplementary heat supply it can also be expressed in a different way by defining the boiler efficiency that is eta b is q5 by q5 plus q1 so it can be solved as 1 minus xl divided by x2 plus 1 minus x2 into 1 minus eta1 so XL is given by this. So by adding all this, the overall plant efficiency of the combined plant becomes eta equals eta1 plus eta2 minus eta1 eta2 minus eta2 into 1 minus eta b which is multiplied again into x2 plus 1 minus x2 into 1 minus eta1 which can be formed by this equation. Then by applying x2 is 0 that is n 0 2 into nb n 2 we know the overall efficiency of the bottom cycle that is n 0 2 which is given over here which is nothing but eta b into eta 2 if x 2 equals 0 then eta becomes eta 1 plus n 0 into 2 minus n, uh, eta 1 into eta 2 eta 0 of the twice value that is eta b into eta 2 gives us the eta 0 of the twice value so thank you guys any questions please leave those in the comments box below you can find me at my academy user platform which i am encircling over here 
and if you have liked the presentation please do rate the course review the course and recommend the lessons done in this course or the presentations done in this course please follow me on the academy user platform mentioned over here thank you guys have a good day